This is going to be your guide to using Iron Hands in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. So let's see what kind of stats Paradox Hariyama has. Busted. 154 on the hit points, 140 on the attack, and then 108 on defense. This Pokemon is tanky. And even with the 68 special defense, like you just go max special defense, wait a second, that's giving us almost 40% more stats. So you can actually just kind of play it out and salvage this Pokemon, which also means if we have bulk up, then we just win the game. What is wrong with Generation 9 design? Oh man, when setting up for this guide, like, in, in just Generation 9, and just, I just lose my mind with all the nonsense. Whether it's the existence of Dondozo, Golden Go, and Garganasalt, or just the absurdity of Iron Hands not getting bulk up. Iron Moth not getting Quiver Dance, and Screamtail, the Succubus Pokemon, not getting Draining Kiss as a Fairy-type Pokemon. But then stat-wise, all of these Pokemon effectively being Mega Evolutions, or better, with even better tuned stats, and the ability to use an item. I... I... It just... It, it, it doesn't make any sense. We're, we're in Crazy Town. What the fuck? But at the end of the day, we still have Turbo Broken stats and the Fighting Electric typing. Weak to ground, we know that because of Electric. Psychic, not a problem. Fairy can be a problem. Good amount of resistances, though. And Offensive Electric, also really good. So the typing kind of comes together for Iron Hands. And with the stats, I'm thinking, yo, we just run it like a bulkier Glamora? Because you have 140 on a primary offensive stat. You can throw a choice band onto it, and now we're just one-shotting everything, right? Wrong, because what makes Glamora work is that it has the high base power special attack moves. You get Sludge Wave, that's 95. You also get access to some other ones, which then pull you into 90 as well. The problem with Iron Hands is that the moves it wants to run because they don't have drawbacks are low base power. Like, sure, you put close combat on it, and it's going to destroy everything. Problem is, you're also very slow, so you become a lot easier to revenge, and then weird matchup stuff ends up happening. Thunder Punch, not as bad because you can put in the Wild Charge, but you still don't want to be taking Recoil because then that can turn you from a 3-hit KO Pokemon into a 2-hit KO Pokemon, and you're getting outsped to begin with. So, you're getting outsped, landing that close combat, but now at the minus 1, it doesn't matter how tanky you are, you're getting KO'd. Same thing for, like, potential Wild Charge interactions, because if you one-shot some one -shot something on Wild Charge, you're taking a lot of damage after also taking the initial hit, so now you only end up KOing one Pokemon because of the drawbacks. Thunder Punch mitigates that, but also takes away a lot of power. Drain Punch just sounds like what you want. You have such a crazy high attack that you do two-shotting everything, you're getting tons of health back, you have great bulk to just kind of survive with, but when you actually get into the damage calculations, it gets kind of weird. So I want to just kind of show like two big beefy Pokemon just kind of brawling it out and then having Iron Hands kind of come on top. But it's not that clean, even into something like Palafin Hero. Now, I consider Palafin to be a trash Pokemon, giving your opponent two free turns. Turns out that just hard loses the game and you don't get enough from the Palafin to make it matter. And there's no real item option. I've seen people say like, oh, but Mystic Water changes this matchup and that's why Palafin's so good. It's like, okay, so now you have no coverage and you're completely walled. Life Orb plus Wave Crash means your survivability goes down immensely. 100 speed isn't good, so tons of sweepers take you out. But if you go Scarf, 160 attack, even with the Wave Crash, not crazy into bulky Pokemon. So the entire Pokemon's identity is a mess, and it's just not good. And then we see like this matchup get really weird. So you take a hit. Wave Crash, gonna do 62%. Drain Punch comes in, does like 70%. But Palafin doesn't go down to the recoil, unless it's like the weirdest thing where you get the highest Drain Punch damage roll, and it gets the highest Wave Crash damage roll, and then like it goes down to recoil or something. We're not, that, that's just not gonna happen. So that's where that low base power comes in. Even with the 140 attack, it's not going to be a reliable KO into something that's recoiling itself super hard. And then if we have something like the Mystic Water, which is right here, then the calculations also get kind of ugly because we're not healing enough to survive the potential to a KO, especially in the Life Orb. The Life Orb recoil might KO the Palafin. Choice Band just crushes us, but then any sweeping Pokemon deals with Palafin very easily and being stuck on a move with low coverage, also not good for the Palafin. Again, the identities here just kind of get messy, but it shows that 
the interactions with the stats and the low base power don't make it clean and easy for the Iron Hands, which is kind of weird. Earthquake is good coverage. Play Rough is good coverage. You effectively play it like the Glamora. It's where, like, yeah, you can just throw out the super effective coverage move, and on a choice band, high attacking Pokemon, it doesn't matter at that point, so you do get the pick up there. Interesting thing about Glamora, though, is, like, it speed creeps, and it wall breaks really well. Iron Hands speed tier at 50 gets extra ugly. Now, going Terra Fighting on Iron Hands just wins, but there is the drawback that you're using your mega power gimmick on a Pokemon to then go into something that's immune by ghost types, or maybe potentially resisted in weird kind of ways. But now, you're like, you just hard win the matchup. Dealing more damage means less threats, more recovery, and other weird interactions that can happen from it, but you're still a 50 base speed Pokemon. Like, this could work. This could just get you to where, use your other two Pokemon, remove their... Like, it, it's just Golden Go. Golden Go's the big problem. You remove their Golden Go, or their Ghost Terra Pokemon, or like some kind of other weirdness, and then Iron Hands just comes in, and then just wins off of the Drain Punch slap down with the Terra Fighting. That's very possible, and as you can see, it is very strong, because you're not going to see Pokemon as bulky as the Palafin, so you can find that Glamora one-shot strength, while also having more sustain and durability. That's kind of how you unlock it, but it means you have to dedicate the Terra. It also means if the opponent tries to throw the Earthquake on you because you're electric, you debate them on the Terra fighting, and then you're just winning. So, yeah, like, stuff happens, I guess. And then I wanted to see other interactions of how our damage goes, so like, even the neutral Earthquake choice band KOs Fluttermane because it has no defenses. I mean, that tracks, because Thunder Punch 75 base power, while well, Stab is, you know, pretty much an Earthquake, slightly more powerful, to where it doesn't even matter. So, yeah, that's a thing. However, super effective onto the fighting, and if we go Terra fighting, that's not going to change any of our weaknesses. Fluttermane just KOs you if it has the choice specs, and also if we look at the life orb damage, it's not going to be pretty. So, you can't really consider that to be reliable, even with the max special defense investment. And Fluttermane is the second most picked Pokemon on the Battle Stadium for Series 2, Season 3. Maybe legendary Pokemon bully this thing out. Maybe Pokemon home transfer shenanigans. Like, but yeah, Fluttermane is just number two right now. And you can also look at these interactions to where Choice Specs, you lose. Focus Sash, you lose. Booster and G Choice Scarf getting less usage. So like one in three Fluttermane you can beat because then it's not going to have the item. So it loses the damage. Like, all right, it's Scarfed. Cool. We survive, but we can't Drain Punch it to get our health back. So, unless it's like a weird thing where you use Thunder Punch to KO an opposing Pokemon, somehow you still have 80% of your health back, which, you're, you're slow, you're taking the hit against them. Unless, like, you're wall-breaking Dondozo with a Thunder Punch? And then you're locked into Thunder Punch and the last Pokemon's Fluttermane, but it's Scarfed? Okay, sure, you win. But it, it's ugly. However, it shows the damage kinda does things, so... Yeah. However, we spent all of that time just talking about one moveset on the Iron Hands, and while I do think it is powerful, like, we showed it being powerful. If you really just kind of set your team up into the Terra Fighting, Drain Punch, one-shotting everything, and you can, you know, manipulate your opponent into not being able to counter that, all right, cool, you, you actually do really well on the Iron Hands, and you can also run damage options and stuff, so it works out pretty well. What about some other things Iron Hands can do? And... Here's where the nonsense of Generation 9 just kind of breaking me feels like it's rewriting all of Pokemon history, because to a degree, why did it take so long for Oko meta to exist? Why is it only manifesting in Generation 9 when very few Pokemon have access to Oko moves? It's mostly Dondozo, Garganosault, also King Gambit being very proficient at that. We've got videos, battles showing that. Check out description down below, my playlist and all that fun stuff. So it's like, but that was still going to be successful in other generations of Pokemon. It took until it took until Season 3 Pokemon Sword and Shield to realize all you have to do is run two or even three anti-setup, anti-tank strategies in the battle stadium, and you actually win games, because setup tanks have always been the most efficient way to play Pokemon. But I've been playing that since Generation 4. And because of my deep game understanding for so long and actually being ahead of the meta by a decade, it further proves why I'm the best Pokemon player ever. And now it's just like, what, why, why wasn't this a thing? Why wasn't it all like anti-stratting and anti-setting up even back in like Generation 4, 5, 6, even with Megas and stuff? I don't know. I, I was just that ahead of my time 
and even though like power creep and new Pokemon kind of changes that, it just kind of seems like that. Like no matter how much power you can put in the game, Terra is putting an insane amount of offensive power into the game. The Paradox Pokemon are just running with illegal stats compared to Generation Six. Like this is a Mega Pokemon, and it gets to have an item. And it gets its own exclusive item if it wants to be extra spicy. And it's still not holding up to tank Pokemon and even older tank Pokemon, not only like Generation 9 Power Crep tank Pokemon and all those strategies. So, I mean, that's just the start of the breakdown that started with Iron Hands because I was looking at it and I went, okay, the biggest fear has always been you get a Pokemon set up. You, you spend 10 turns getting it going, you have only body press or something, or you only have stored power, and then they bring in the immunity. So like, iron defense, charge, body press. This seems really good. How do you KO an iron hands that has this much bulk, that is doubling its defenses, that is finding special defense inside of the charge, who cares about the electric power boosting, so, like, you have Curse Amnesia here, or Iron Defense Calm Mind, whatever, whatever flavor of that. It's, it's the same thing. You have a plus two, plus one into your crazy stats. You max out the plus one stat. You go crazy on the hit points. Defense maybe means, like, this is slightly more optimal, but surviving special attacks, also just good. It's kind of why, even if you're going, like, max defense Blissey, you still want to max out your hit points, because your defense is so low that those extra 32 hit points matter in a lot of situations. Especially for, like, boosting with the defense curl or something. So, I don't know. Maybe this, but level 50 is going to be a little different. So it's going to look like that for the battle stadium. Either way, like, you do all the setup, ghost-type Pokemon comes in, and then you feel really bad. However, maybe that should have just never been a fear because these strategies are so strong. I find it kind of wild that it took until Generation 9 to realize that Encore is actually like the most devastating setup move because it means the tank Pokemon has absolutely no counterplay. That the Encore Pokemon switches in, has the outspeed because tanks are slow, and then just locks down that Pokemon for having the audacity of setting up instead of like, oh, a taunt response. Taunt response still lets them keep those stats. Still has the ability to just kind of like, okay, I'm going to go into my damaging move or not get like hard, as hard countered, even though Taunt's still a pretty hard counter. Like it lets the Pokemon play the game. Encore does not let the Pokemon play the game. We're seeing Trick Choice item and all of this stuff getting more and more used pretty much with every generation since Generation 5. I think Encore did get a little bit of play in like Generation 5, Generation 6. But once again, like that, now it's like, oh, this is stupid and how strong it is, and maybe it should've just gotten more play all along. I don't know. So now, my thought, and I know I'm rambling a lot, but like I said, this this entire metagame is, is destroying me, and it's changing my entire idea of how Pokemon works to where maybe we should've just been running this the entire time. Like, stored power, very good, not a liability, because this is your win condition. You just make it to where, you in Battle Stadium especially, like, you look at the opponent's team, you can see if they have a Dark-type Pokemon, if they do, maybe you just kind of play for your other two Pokemon to only remove it, or you just don't bring it. You can keep this in your 4 through 6 and just not worry. But the second they don't have a Ghost-type Pokemon, you just win the game on the spot. It's going to increase your win rate. Same thing for just having that. Like, maybe you just bring a core of three Pokemon, and as bad as it sounds, like, you think Battle Stadium, you think 3v3 singles, and you think, okay, what I need to do is I need to predict what my opponent's going to bring, counterpick it, and try to shut down their options as much as possible. But no, it really just seems like you have three strong Pokemon core strategy that you just brain dead almost always throw into, unless it's like obviously hard countered by the opponent's team. And then you just keep tech Pokemon on the side that are an almost 100% win condition if they don't, just don't bring one kind of Pokemon. Like you have this Iron Hands, you have some kind of stored power strategy, and then maybe something else weird like a Dondozo just because Oko is so good. Or even something like a King Gambit because it's secretly the best Oko user, but I wouldn't recommend King Gambit with this because they both are fishing for like non-ghost type teams. But yeah, you could you could just run something that even though it theoretically has the counter, who cares? Sometimes the opponent just isn't going to have a dark type Pokemon, or they just aren't going to have a ghost type Pokemon, in which case this is now very strong and you can use the rest of your team to support it. And if it just finds that in, how, how do you stop it? As for items, uh, this is where like the thing is Chesto Resto is too good. Once you get set up, you can wake up, still have half your health, take an action, go back to resting. Doesn't matter that Rust PP was nerfed because you get eight of those. And by that point, you're just hard winning. Like, all right, you go plus six on iron defense, plus four on charge. 
now they're doing 20 damage to you a turn, yeah, you're fine. You actually get to you get to the point where you take three actions before you have to rest, and your body press is one shotting because you're at plus six iron defense, and they don't have ghost type Pokemon. So chest of rest to get it set up. That works. Other Pokemon that have you know body press sustain, you can run citrus berry and stuff. So just kind of like here's the strat on an overtuned tank Pokemon that has like weird stuff because in a weird way the paradox Pokemon are underpowered because of like some of the limitations they're given. But if you just kind of like play it to where I only run this in 5% of games because the opponent doesn't have ghost type, even though it's going to be higher than that. Let's I run this in 15% of games because the opponent doesn't have golden go or ghost type Pokemon, but it's like a 90% win rate because of that. That's worth a six slot that you're probably not selecting anyways because you have a core three. So yeah, you can do this. You can run it with some other ideas in Pokemon. So it's taken this long. For all of these weird game warping sleeper strategies to kind of materialize and then rethink how Pokemon's been played for the, over the last decade of competitive, like 15 years of competitive. And the result isn't any kind of stronger game understanding. It's actually, oh, you just unga bunga harder because everything was fraudulent the entire time. And it just took more fraudulence to expose that. What? Oh, and hope you guys enjoy the video. Have a nice day. This game is broken, dude.